Early on, we did we saw every specialist. You know, we saw neurologists, neurooptometrists, orthopedists, all of the doctors. So we traveled to Johns Hopkins and we got no diagnosis. Every test sort of came back normal, but then she wasn't developing in terms of gross motor skills. And at some point we realized, actually one of the doctors at Johns Hopkins told us that science just probably hadn't caught up to her yet. And that whatever she had, we would discover it, but science wasn't there yet. And that someday science would catch up. We saw so many doctors across the country, geneticists, neurologists, but it wasn't until 2017 when we actually got a diagnosis. Emily was 20 years old. It was about a year ago we found out that her genetic testing revealed a mutation on her CACNA1A gene, or CACNA1A, and it was a relief to find an answer to explain what we were seeing in our daughter, but at the same time it was really we were shocked and in disbelief because our doctor gave us this news but really had no resources to explain what this meant for her life. For our daughter's diagnosis, it was a four-year journey. We ended up going through the Undiagnosed Diseases Network at NIH after she received an incorrect diagnosis in infancy. And then once we came to NIH, and it was their sole job to find an accurate diagnosis, they told us that she had a CACNA1A variant and not much more. When she was 10, she had a medical crisis and was in the hospital. We now know it was a hemoplegic migraine, which is a stroke-like episode. And so we had to start testing anew just to rule things out. We found her diagnosis. Individuals with CACNA1A mutations experience a wide range of symptoms, including often uncontrolled epilepsy, a balance and coordination disorder called ataxia, eye movement disorders, and hemiplegic migraines which are stroke-like events that result in paralysis on one side of the body, loss of skills, and potentially fatal cerebral edema. There are no specific treatment options for this disease, and our kids are often in and out of the hospital to manage medical crises. What is even scarier for us as parents is that CACNA1A can also be neurodegenerative, which is why we need to accelerate research towards a cure. When she was four years old, when we received the CACNA1A variant, we immediately turn to the internet, we look for resources, and we look for specialists. But mostly what we end up finding is other families that are in our situation. I started reading, but I couldn't find anything in layman's terms. So we went to see a geneticist to learn about the diagnosis. And the first thing she said to me was, have you joined a Facebook group? So we ended up on a private Facebook forum with a lot of other families, looking for information, looking for connections, looking for somebody with our child's exact variant which we didn't find, but we found commonality with other families, particularly mothers, who were doing the same thing that we were. We were reaching out for connections, we were reaching out for information, and looking to find out what is the best way forward for our child so that she can thrive and have the best quality of life possible. We set up the foundation in the spring of 2020, right before the COVID-19 pandemic. So we've met on Zoom, we've met on FaceTime, but <laughs> we've really never met before. So walking into a room, it was just so different. I've got to see their faces in little boxes, but I've never had a chance to meet them or their daughters. And so it was really special to be able to see the daughters that are the driving force behind all of our work. It was shared experience, right? I mean, that's what we're all looking for in life is to find someone who's like shared, I think oftentimes some of our hardest experiences. And there's something really refreshing about being in a room of people who you don't have to explain and there aren't questions and you don't ever feel like they're sitting there wondering but not asking their questions like we all just get it. Since launching this foundation we've been moving at lightning speed. This past weekend we had a family and scientific conference and we had 225 people register. We had 70 scientists and healthcare professionals join us and people came from 21 countries. So it was really, really successful. And, you know, we're here and hoping to make a difference for our kids. I think in general, when you have something that's rare, that's not where research dollars are necessarily put, less people are focused on it, right? But at the same time, we have found people who are focused on it, scientists at universities across the world and in labs across the world, but it's been very siloed. And so, you know, they haven't necessarily been sharing with one another, talking about what they've found. And we're really looking to be that missing link to connect people, to bring everybody together, because through that, we will see science move at a faster pace, hopefully. 
I think the main focus and goal of the foundation is to build this collaborative network of researchers, clinicians, and families and patients to work towards a cure. We have to have the families and patients with CACNO 1A join us in this fight. And meeting everybody here today just solidifies it for me that we're gonna be able to do this and we're gonna be able to do it together because there's strength in numbers. How can people help the foundation? The bottom line is that we need funding. There is a lot of basic research on the CAC and A1A gene, but we are looking to fund translational research, which means research focused on a cure. The foundation has given us a great sense of hope and purpose, and we know that together we can push science forward. Because the science is there. We just really need to organize our community. We need to organize our researchers, and we need to show them that these kids deserve a cure. I think my one piece of advice that I would tell parents is that you have to always be optimistic and you can't underestimate your child. I would tell myself to worry a little bit less that she's going to be okay, she's going to thrive, we're going to thrive, and that life really is going to be more beautiful than all of my fears that are keeping me up at night. I think the most important thing is to live in the moment and really enjoy your daughter or your son for who they are and what they can do and just really celebrate every milestone. My favorite thing about my daughter is how happy she is. She always has this great smile on her face. She has a wonderful sense of humor and she makes us laugh every single day. Her imagination and creativity, she lives in a place that's magical. Like she's always imagining, I don't know, like sliding on a rainbow or riding a unicorn. And it reminds me to lighten up and look for the magic too. Take, take seven. My daughter just radiates joy. Like she wakes up in the morning, she's excited to be up. She's excited to start her day. And that energy and that joy lasts the entire day. She lights up the room everywhere we go. And it's one of the reasons we wanted to start this foundation because there's so many kids out there like her, all the other kids with CACNA 1A, they have families right behind them just like we are from Erin that want them to thrive, want them to succeed, and want them to have the best quality of life. And the foundation is gonna be the way that we can give it to them. Thanks to our researchers, we are learning more about CACNA 1A related diseases. But anyone who has been touched by it knows there's still a lot of work to be done. At 24, my daughter Cerebellum has begun to atrophy. The clock is ticking. Our goal as a family-led foundation is to push science forward to discover life-changing treatments for everyone living with this rare disease. Our kids are depending on us.